stuck uh, Shane Gagan for Pitchfork and they shot him. So a mistaken identity and, and an innocent man was murdered. The victim was visiting friends here in the estate last night to watch the Ireland-Canada rugby match and was returning home when he was shot in what they now believe was a case of mistaken identity. You get situations like that and obviously, quite justifiably, everybody is outraged when that happens. But most of the murders are, are intra-gang murders. Uh, you know, people not handing over the money they collected when they sold some drugs, people giving information to the guards who are being shot for that reason, and so on and so forth. And it's quite vicious. In the 70s, the drugs trade became a feature of life in Limerick. Huge money, very lucrative business. Obviously, the more money that could be made, the more ruthless people became. Uh, as each generation succeeds the other, the new generation is more violent than the one that preceded it. Now, their grandfathers were Petty criminals, a bit of breaking and entering, the odd assault. And, you know, as it came down through the generations, the level of crime they were uh, involved in became more serious. But the X factor was drugs, because it's drugs that provide the finances to make them serious criminals. It's drugs that provide the finance uh, to get them into organized crime. It's drugs that provide the interconnectors uh, to make them national organizations rather than limerick organizations and it's drugs that provide the solder to get them involved you know in the gun trade across europe for years serious crime in limerick was the occupation of two outlaw families the keens led by veteran gangster christy keen and his violent younger brother kieran their sidekicks were the ryans led by killer eddie ryan Eddie Ryan was envious of all the loot the Keens were grossing from Limerick's drug trade, and he wanted more. The Keens said no. Eddie then tried to kill Christie, but his gun jammed. Two weeks later, Kieran Keane came back looking for revenge. Garthy estimate the armed men fired up to 15 shots, killing Eddie Ryan and seriously injuring two women sitting close to him. A customer asked, where do you hit Eddie? Everywhere, he gasped. That was his last word. When they were leaving the pub, they turned back at the pub and they discharged eight shots through the window of that pub. Pub was full of people on a Saturday night and they made their escape. The gunning down of Eddie Ryan was the first fusillade in a feud that has claimed too many lives. The vendetta has overshadowed life in Limerick and continues to this day. The body count now stands at 22. They absolutely hate each other. There have been so many people killed on each side now that it seems to be the most natural reaction. Uh, that you, you know, make sure the person on the other side pays the ultimate price because they've done that to you. Just as the Keen Ryan War was unleashed back in 2000, a branch of another Limerick crime family entered the fray when the Dundons returned home from England. The Dundon brothers, John, Desi, Jer, and headman Wayne. Wayne Dundon claims he doesn't smoke, drink, or take drugs. He takes pleasure in inflicting pain. He started his criminal career specializing in robbing and beating defenseless elderly people in England. On one occasion, he pummeled a pensioner in a wheelchair during a robbery. After serving four years in an English jail, he was deported in 2000 because the Home Office considered him a dangerous felon. Today, he's graduated to the leadership of the McCarthy Dundon Gang, one of Ireland's leading narco-terror outfits. It's always very important to remember that the first and most important cause of uh, crime is the decision of the criminal to commit it. The idea that criminals lack self-esteem is preposterous. The problem is not that they lack self-esteem. The problem is that they have far too much of it. They haven't been humiliated nearly enough. The Dundon brothers would fan the flames of the feud between the Keens and the Ryans, 
James McCarthy, Desi Dundon and Anthony McCarthy, all allegedly loyal to the Ryan family. You fucking muppets! The McCarthy-Dundon gang. They would pose as allies to both factions. All the while, they plotted to step over the bodies of their rivals on their way to dominance of the Limerick underworld and terrify the Republic's third largest city. Within Limerick City, they are one of the most violent gangs that I or my investigators, our colleagues, have, in, have encountered over the last number of years. The Dundon uh, McCarthy gang was structured almost like uh, a mafia. The ferocity of the crimes that were committed by the gang instilled a lot of fear in their own gang members, number one, in the wider community, and certainly in the, in the, in the gangs opposing them. It seems that they have set the benchmark and the others have followed. If they are violent, the others must be more violent. And if the others are more violent, they must be more violent again. And it is not simply the, the killing of somebody, but the maiming and the torturing of somebody in the most horrific circumstances. It all goes back to the structure, really, of the gang. Uh, it's, it's based on the family and the dynamics that goes with the family and the ability of those gangs to, to recruit into their lower ranks, impressionable young men whom they'll send out to do their bidding and who will do it voluntarily. You're looking at the Dunning gang like, and these are just four brothers. They're four Muppets as far as I'm concerned, like, you know, and I don't know why they get the respect they do. They were able to form this gang of, of lunatics and uh, that would do their, their deed, like, and, and that's, that's really, and they've got, got from strength to strength with that. When, when the Dundons are away, locked away, nothing happens in the city. I mean, it's not just coincidence, you know, it's, it's a fact. You know, I mean, you look back on it through, through all, the, all the previous times that they've come out of prison, there's been mayhem, you know. It's only when he's around, he causes this kind of shit around the, around the city, like. These are just some of the firearms guard they have taken off the criminals and the dissident Republicans that are arming them. Pump action shotguns, Webley and automatic handguns, revolvers, grenades, and a machine pistol with silencer. The bad fellas are getting younger in Limerick. The killers are often kids who should be in school. Typically now, people who are committing shootings at the behest of the drug dealers can be as young as 15, 16, and 17. In a recent case, uh, a courier was used to convey guns away from the scene of a crime. Uh, he was 13 years of age. Yeah, people fight turf wars and they, by doing so, they become king of the castle and they're, um, they feel big. When the gang bosses feel big, everybody else must kowtow and feel small. So few people grasp the elementary point, which is that the primary victims of crime are the poor, not the rich. It's like a, a prison without orders. They're actually more or less enclosed in their houses. They're afraid to go out, except at times permitted by the psychopathic people who act as the warders in the sense that they're imposing their kind of order. They can't escape from these estates. They have a kind of life sentence to them. I mean, they can, of course, go out on day release. At night, they're locked into their houses by the disorder outside. And they have uh, the prison governor, who is the, uh, the local psychopath or psychopath's family, who imposes his will, and from which there is no appeal. The concept of enemy is used in criminology to explain crime in that individuals who do not feel a connection to the society, who do not feel part of the norms and rules, will not feel the need to adhere to those regulations, will not feel a part of the, of the community. Anomie is most common in societies that are undergoing rapid change or that are undergoing a, a rapid breakdown in social cohesion. In Limerick, the principal criminal agents corroding social cohesion are the McCarthy-Dundon gang. 
the Dundon McCarthy gang, they had a far broader agenda altogether. Their agenda certainly was to dominate the drugs trade, wipe out all other gangs, but also to take on society. Part of the Dundon Grand Plan is to take over neighbourhoods and build Dundonville. Areas like Ballinacurra and Moy Ross are seen as territories to be conquered and occupied. The Dundons want to consolidate and secure their criminal base. To do that, they have been making offers to locals that cannot be refused. When tenant purchase of local authority dwellings became general, gangs of people who were very wealthy as a result of their activities in the drugs trade uh, started to buy up these houses. And um, oh, often uh, they cleared out the residence of other houses nearby. In Limerick, compulsory purchase on terms decreed by the gang bosses is a method of tightening the screws on an area. Members of the gang will be assigned the house because if they're not, the house may well be burned out or may be vandalised. Over time, the gang establishes itself in an area and by the sheer size of it and the sheer reputation of that gang, it really intimidates everybody in that neighbourhood. The defiance of the Collins family was a running sore for the McCarthy Dundon gang. Their gangland enemies watched and waited and came out of the shadows on the morning of April the 9th, 2009, Holy Thursday. On that morning, uh, we, it was like any other morning came in here. I was setting up the business in the pub and Roy went into the casino to set up the casino. And about a half an hour later, I got a call from the barman to say, like, somebody was bleeding next door in the casino. Went in and I seen Roy just in the corner, bent down on his hunkers, and he couldn't breathe. He lifted himself up and I could see the bullet on the ground. Like, and I just couldn't believe that what I was looking at. And uh, he kept on repeating to me that he couldn't breathe, he couldn't get his breath. He just held on to me and he told me he loved me. He loved his mother. Roy Collins lost his fight for life a few hours later. This was a salutary crime. The calculated murder of a young man related to a witness who had stood up to a crime boss. This was an attack on every citizen of the state. He was murdered clearly to send a signal uh, to the rest of the community in Limerick that if anybody uh, came forward and gave evidence or helped the uh, criminal trials, uh, that they were going to be taken out as well. It's as much a threat to the security of the state as the subversives were back in the 70s. Evil. There's no other word for it. With the persecution of the Collins family, the Badfellas of Limerick had put down a chilling marker. This is our town. Get in our way at your peril. It was time for the state to strike back. Yeah.